Hey guys, Nary here from Drakewing Gamers, so you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of Cilio, Tales of a New Dawn. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Uh, October 11th, yeah, right here, okay. <clears throat> Alright, we just uh, showed up for work, and let's see what the work evening holds for us, guys. Alright, alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. Follow me, I have a uniform for you to wear. I changed into the clothing Ty had provided for me. It was a good fit, and I hadn't even provided Ty with my sizes. Okay, I have Diego on kitchen duty this evening. He is all alone out there, but I think he is ready. Oh, I didn't realize he was that good of a cook. Mm, excuse me. He was not before, but I have been training him up for this very situation. I see. So where does that leave us? You and I will be out from out front here. I will handle everything in the bar. I will handle everything in the bar. You will be on the till, taking orders and payments. Do you have experience with that sort of thing? Have you used our point of sale before? I took a glance at the screen in front of me. As luck would have it, the point of sale was a software developed by the company I used to work for before arriving at Woodcrest. My job was just paperwork. I still have a good level of familiarity with the suite. I passed this information on to Ty. Life is just full of wonderful coincidences, is it not? Well then, I will leave the point of sale to you. If you run into any issues, just let me know. I will be here. Anytime you receive an order for food, stick it in the box on the kitchen window for Diego. If you receive an order for alcohol, use a magnet to attach it to the board behind us. And that really is the gist of it. Common sense applies. Smile, be courteous, all of that. Any questions? And not particularly. This is easier than I expected it would be. Being the cashier usually is. The hardest part is getting your head around the point of sale usually. You have a significant advantage in that regard. Also, I try to train all my staff on every station for flexibility. This is the easiest of the bunch, so I can assure you there will still be plenty of challenges ahead. Oh, so much for training. Looks like I'm ready to go. Unexpected, but most appreciated. Things will be slow for the next little while, but a little while, but we'll pick up later on. How about you make a start and get some practice in before the busy period starts? Let's do this. Hmm. A little over an hour had passed, and as Ty had predicted, the workload had picked up significantly. Thankfully, everything went quite smoothly, and the point of sale worked exactly as I'd expected it to. I was taking an order every few minutes, some for the bar, but most for the kitchen. Diego's pile of tickets was growing steadily, and I began to worry if he was keeping up with the load. Ty, on the other hand, was clearly a master server and bartender. He was zipping around at a breakneck pace, preparing drinks, serving tables, and keeping completely calm all the while. It was wonderful to be working with someone that dedicated and experienced. I found a brief opportunity with no customers queued up, to which I took a... Which I, uh, well, I queued up, which I took to check on things in the kitchen. What I found was Diego, much like Ty, rushing around like a madman. He had several pans frying different things, half of his ovens all working in tandem, a number of deep fryers all crackling away. As he moved back and forth, I noticed he was panting as he went. I can only hope he had not drooled all over the food. I thought it best not to disturb his focus. I returned to my post. Finally, we reached the end of a, the end of dinner hours and had stopped taking new orders. Thankfully, towards the end of things had slowed and we didn't we didn't need any extra time to catch up. How about that? You did a splendid job. Are you kidding? I was the only cashier. I was only the cashier. You and Diego had the real work. You could say that again. I beat. I apologize. I did not anticipate several people would call in sick today. Diego, I must say you exceeded my expectations. For the most part, everything came out looking fantastic and with minimal errors. Thank you for stepping up today. <laughs> what can I say? I'm pretty good. Diego merely grumbled in response. And he wasn't having a bar. He wasn't having a bar of it. You certainly are. And Brian, thank you so much for coming in to help today. I do not think I could have opened if you had not. You really saved my skin. It's no problem. I assure you, not every day is like this. This was a mostly unusual set of circumstances. I hope you will not think poorly of my offer as a consequence. Of course not. Like I said, I was just the cashier. I've had far worse. Very good. On that topic, are you happy to work for me on a casual basis going forward? There'll certainly be work available, but not every day. Why not? Sounds good to me. I'm very glad to hear that. Now, I did promise you both a free meal. Diego's ears suddenly pricked up. But in celebration of both your wonderful work tonight, and Brian as an addition to our team, why not order as much as you like? As much as we like? Starters, entrees, desserts, you name it. N including drinks? I suppose that would not be an issue. Just take it easy, okay? Hell yeah! 
Diego, if nothing else, was woefully predictable. The mere mention of an all-you-can-eat dinner and all of his troubles would just disappear. <laughs> oh dear. Is Ty going to regret those words? The two of us had seated ourselves at a table and were browsing the menus. We'd ordered a platter to start us off with sample sizes of almost every starter on the menu. Diego had ordered a double shot whiskey and cola. I'd ordered another of Ty's famous pina coladas. As far as entree, Diego knew what he wanted straight away and put in an order for a chicken, chicken parmigiana. As for my own order, Diego had sworn by the parmesan and Ty had recommended the chicken filo. But I admit, I also had my eye on the beef and chorizo chili nachos. I'll, I'll go with Diego's suggestion or the chicken parmigiana. Oh man, great choice. I promise you're going to love it. Very well, Diego sure loves it. I am positive you will too. Ty made note of our orders and returned to the kitchen to prepare our meals. <laughs> it wasn't long before Ty returned with our meals. It looked absolutely delicious. Ty was clearly as good a chef as he was a bartender. He had also brought us another set of drinks, even though ours weren't finished yet. Wow, boss. Awfully generous when it's on your tab. I am trying to thank you, boys. What kind of thanks would it be if I held out on you, hmm? I mean, fair, but... I think that think what Diego is trying to say is thank you, Ty. That would be in my that would be in my line in these circumstances. Now I hope you boys would not mind if I ate with you. I prepared a little something for myself as well. Of course not. We'd be honored. Wonderful. Just one moment, please. Ty made his way around the bar, scouting for any additional patrons. Having found none, he locked the front doors and set the sign to closed. I checked my watch. It was only 10:30 p.m. I suppose it being a Wednesday meant the bar wouldn't be open as late as it would be on other days. Ty then returned, having tossed his vest on the bar counter and placed his own plate of chicken filo on the table. He then pulled out a chair beside us and sat down. Bon appetit. Hey, boss. Hmm? Not having a drink yourself? I wanted to play it safe, just in case either of you boys needed a sober driver. Oh, well, that's that's real thoughtful of you, boss. Diego raised his glass with a grin and, ch and clugged that and clugged what remained and chugged what remained. His second glass sitting at the ready. This action caused Ty to raise his brow somewhat. That boy sure loves his drink. I ain't no drunk. Of course not. Oh, uh, really? Hey! <laughs> Following our meals and several more drinks for Diego, Ty gave us both a lift home. What a nice boss. Ty's uh, cooking is really something, huh? That it is. I'm gonna head to bed, feeling a little woozy. All right, I'll catch you tomorrow then. Good night. Day five. Alrighty, what do we got? I decided to pay Lucas a visit in order to accept his offer. With Ty's work being sporadic, it made sense to me to have multiple jobs on the go. Couldn't say I minded the variety either. I went with, it went without saying that I was a little nervous. Lucas was a little scary and hardly the welcoming sort. If it were for Dom's insistence that he wasn't so bad, I doubt I'd, ha I doubt I'd have come. So, you're taking me up on my offer, then? That's right. I I'm filling in for Ty as well, so it can't be every day, but I'm happy to be on call. That's fine. On call is what I need. You can start today. So soon? I've got a stage that needs building and nothing but a fox and a lousy rat to build it. I guess that isn't a problem. I didn't have any other plans today. Good. I introduced you to your team for the day, but Dom already knows, and Eric, well, you'll know him soon enough. It sounds vaguely ominous. It is. I hadn't counted on Lucas needing help on that very day, which was contrary to what he'd suggested when we had first met. I could only assume someone called off. Clearly an all-too-common problem in these parts. Not that I was likely to find out from Lucas himself. Saying it was tight-lipped would be a gross understatement. Lucas had instructed me to wait in the communal area with the rest of today's team while he got himself organized. Alas, it was only myself and Dom here. No sign of this Eric anywhere. Did you get roped into helping out today? I did. Was someone sick or something? A sudden bereavement leave. Terrible tragedy. Oh, that's really unfortunate. Oh, hey, wasn't there supposed to be someone else out here? That would be Eric. He's running late. Sounds like someone I know. Doesn't it just? Still, this is as good a time this is as good of a time to warn you as any. Eric is well, he's an interesting sort. Really? Really, just ignore his crap because well, believe me, there'll be crap. What kind of crap? 
All of a sudden, the door in the entrance blew open and in an swaggered a rat who couldn't have been much taller than Axel. At first, his expression was a bemused one. That was until he spotted me, and it changed to something between excitement and curiosity. Oh, well, hello there. Well, well, what do we have here, eh? I'm Brian. I'm working on call with for Lucas now. Figures. I'd never forget a face like that. Uh, a face like... What's wrong with my face? Not a single thing, you fuzzy hunk. Okay. Oh, he's flaming gay. <laughs> I gotta check in with Lucas. I'll be seeing you both real soon. And with that, he wandered off, disappearing into Lucas's office. What just happened? Dom sighed and shook his head. That boneheaded specimen was Eric. So I figured, but like, is he like that with everybody? Pretty much. Even Lucas? Especially Lucas. In fact, he... Before Dom could finish his sentence, we were interrupted by the sound of Lucas yelling before the office door flew open and Eric briskly ex exited, closing it behind him with a cheeky smile. Who? Oh, better watch it, boys. He's in a bad mood today. And whose fault is that? You two. We're leaving. Now. Roger that. Today, we're building a stage for a music event taking place tonight. Dom, you're setting up the bar in the corner over there. Schematics are on the clipboard on top of those boxes. Gotcha. I'll make a start. Eric, you're... Now do signage. You'll be building the stage. And take Brian here with you. Show him how it's done. Eh, fine. What was that? Nothing at all, sweet cheeks. Consider the stage built. Huh, <laughs> Brian, let's get him before he throws me through another door. I mean, I can't say I blame him. <laughs> yeah, like he hits on everybody. I, I can see how that would be kind of uh, off-putting. Ever built a stage before? I can't say I have. Watch and learn, then. Bear witness to a master at work. Eric began by lifting a large metal rail and snapping it into place a little above his head. Despite his size, he lifted it surprisingly easily and with little strain. Regardless, I thought to offer my assistance as to not be rude. Do you need me to help with any sort of lifting? Me? Need help? In your dreams? I'll have this bad boy ready in five minutes flat. You'll see. If you say so. Eric then lifted several more rails into place and began locking them into position with some bolts. He then grabbed some cables from a box and ran them along the bottom of the rails, through clips designed to hold the cables in place. I couldn't help but notice Eric's tail swishing from side to side as he worked. It struck me as quite uncharacteristic for a rat, but was nevertheless an amusing sight. He also had a rather firm ass. Trust me to notice that. And next up, he grabbed a couple large stage lights out of a box and began fastening them to the rail. Looking closely, I noticed that one of the mounting points was slightly bent and Eric was having trouble getting the light in place. Are you sure you don't need help? I told you, I've got... He was interrupted by the light coming loose and falling dramatically onto his foot. Ah, fuck you, piece of shit! He gave a light and solid kick with the same foot, which only seemed to cause him more pain. I got up and rushed over him to make sure he was okay. Are you okay? Does your foot hurt? No shit, my foot hurts, but I'm fine. Nothing to worry about. Do you mind if I take a look to make sure you aren't injured? Oh. Okay, I was trying to get up a furball, I think. I said I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Sit down for a bit. Take it easy. I think I can figure out how to get this light in place. Get it through your thick skull. I'm fine. What's all the commotion? Eric dropped a light. Nothing, boss. Nothing at all. No problem. Lucas's eyes shifted to the stage light on the ground and to Eric's gingerly raised foot. He'd seen all I needed to see. Eric, you jackass. I should have known you'd be showing off again. Those lights are expensive. S Sorry, boss. Sorry, Lucas. I offered to help, but... Yes, I know. Eric, let the newbie help you, and maybe you'll avoid incidents like this. <laughs> Lucas took his leave and went back to doing what he was doing. Eric hobbled over to the side of the stage and eased himself into a sitting position. Are you sure you're okay? You don't look okay. Just a little sore. Give me five minutes. I turned around and grabbed a pair of pliers, using them to bend the mount, in shape, to bend the mount back into shape. I then lifted the light into place. It was much heavier than I was expecting. I faced Eric once more to see he had taken his shoe off. His foot was bleeding slightly and looked rather swollen. He wouldn't be walking on that properly for at least a few days. I know Lucas wouldn't want the st would want the stage finished, but Eric was in need of some first aid, regardless of whether or not he'd admit it or accept it. What should I do? Finish the stage or help Eric? 
Uh, the hen, and I, no, I don't know. Um, fuck. Uh, let's see. Save this part. Yeah, I'm glad you can save during choices. Let's see. Finish the stage. Uh, yeah. Fuck you, Eric. Or <laughs> help, Eric. Uh, I'm a helpful type. I decided the stage could wait. Eric's foot wasn't looking too hot, and that was more pressing right now. Let me take a look at it. It's fine, it's just a scratch. Dude, it's more than a scratch, it's totally a gouge. Anne, no big deal, watch. Eric tried to stand up, putting weight on his injured foot, wincing all the while. His leg was trembling. See, fine. Give it up, dude, you're clearly in pain. Shut up, you don't. I took Eric by surprise by grabbing him and lifting him into the air. Hey, what the hell? Oh, shut up. I carried him to the bench near the entrance with a first aid kit on the wall nearby. I gently lowered him onto the bench and grabbed some bandages, antiseptic, and painkillers from the box. I began by handing him the painkillers. Eric said nothing and obediently swallowed the pills whole. Next, I poured some antiseptic on the wound. Gah! Fucking stings! I finally, I wrapped his foot in a bandage and fastened it up tight, making sure to put some pressure on the wound. There! Good as new. Sort of. I could have done that myself. Oh, shut up, Eric! Is that how you show your gratitude? Just wait here. We'll finish up what we're doing, I'll take you home. Take it easy for a few days. I'll be okay, it's just... Eric, listen. Take a few days. Got it? Eric got up and hobbled out of the room. Lucas just gave a big sigh. I'm sorry about him. He's a pain in the ass at times. Good initiative seeing through his bluster and tending to his foot, though. I appreciate that. It's no problem. Sorry we didn't get the stage finished. It's fine. Only a small stage. Shouldn't take long to finish it all. I'm glad to hear it. Dom! Yes, boss. Here. Lucas passed the keys for the venue to Dom. Mind finishing up? I'm gonna drop Eric home. Sure thing. Brian, did you want to ride with me? Shouldn't I stay back and help Dom? Believe me, he's more than capable of building a stage on his own. Should have just should just have him have had blah. Should have just had him do it in the first place. Come, let's head to the car. Aw, I wish you could have gotten the option to stay back and help Dom. Lucas had helped Eric into the back seat of his car while I rode shotgun. We drove for about five minutes in awkward silence with the occasional pain noise from the back seat. Eventually, we arrived at Eric's house, which was interestingly only a short walk from Diego's, right on the edge of the woods. Lucas had then suggested dropping into Ty's for a quick drink. Considering that how little time I'd had alone with Lucas so far, I thought to go. I thought to tag along. Besides, I'd never pass up an opportunity for another of Ty's delicious pina coladas. Afternoon. Lucas, my friend, good to see you as always. And I see you have brought familiar company. Brian was helping me with the stage build today. Eric injured his foot, and Brian took the initiative to give him first aid. We just got done dropping him home. Well, Brian, as ever, as ever my faith in you was not misplaced. It would seem Lucas is impressed. I don't know about impressed, but he's certainly competent. I suppose you're as good a judge of character as always, Ty. Something I pride myself in, of course. First drink is on the house, boys. If you keep giving away free drinks, that's gonna hurt your bottom line. Oh, hush, indulge my generosity. <laughs> if it isn't Brian, with Lucas? Diego? Hey, Diego, how's work? Same as usual. I was wondering, did you want to watch a movie or something tonight? I don't know, Diego, we'll see what time I get home. Alright, no rush. If not tonight, there's always another night. Right, the two of you are living together, aren't you? Alright, I'll pause it right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!